Hello. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I think the Lightning Network has the potential to be a game changer for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And I'm going to start by drawing an analogy to the internet. So when the internet was being developed, before any sort of routing technologies existed, you had something called a flat local area network or a LAN. And it was essentially a broadcast network. And what that means is that if a piece of information was to come into it, that information would be heard by everybody else. You couldn't just send a piece of information to just one person. So obviously that could not scale. And the same problem exists for blockchain or Bitcoin. So if a transaction was to enter the blockchain network like this, everybody has to hear it in order to validate the transaction. So obviously this also cannot scale. And to illustrate the point, a blockchain typically today with the Bitcoin network, it only supports up to seven transactions per second, which is significantly less than what Visa can do, which is in the order of 40,000 transactions per second. So clearly, um, this was a problem that existed in the internet and was solved through routing technologies. So um, this couldn't work today, and you needed to essentially introduce a new layer. And I'll talk a little about that uh, right now. So. Let me describe to you how the internet works today at the most simplest level. So let's say you have Bob, and he has to get to google.com. And to do that, he's going to connect to his ISP. And the ISP could be a Comcast. And what they would do is they would have connections to certain routers along the way. Maybe a router here. So another router there, and eventually these routers will connect you to Google.com. So an interesting thing to note is that with the internet, you're constrained by the speed of each of the links. And essentially, you can only go as fast as the slowest link between your source and the destination. So between Bob and Google, the slowest speed is the 50 megabit connection, which is between him and the ISP, and that is the constraint here. Now with Lightning, it works in a very similar way. Let's say Bob wants to send some money to Alice. And to do that, he might establish a channel to somebody else. Let's say it's his bar that he goes to. And that bar might have another channel established to a person named Sue. And Sue might then have a channel established to her favorite coffee shop who then has a channel established to Alice. And what's interesting here is that much like with the internet, Bob connects to the network or the internet by establishing a connection to his ISP. With the Lightning Network, you establish a payment channel with a bar or somebody else to join the network. So in the Lightning Network, uh, in this example, Bob might have a one Bitcoin uh, payment channel with the bar. The bar might have a two Bitcoin payment channel with Sue. Sue might have a half a Bitcoin payment channel with a coffee shop. And the coffee shop might have a single Bitcoin payment channel with Alice. So the important thing to note is that in the Lightning Network, you're constrained by the link with the smallest capacity, which is the 0.5 Bitcoin. So if Bob wants to send Alice some money, he can only send at most half a Bitcoin because there's not enough capacity along this particular path to send more than half. And much like with the internet, you're constrained um, by the link with the slowest speed, and that's the 50 megabit connection there. So it's very analogous to how um, you know the internet uh, is uh, designed in terms of routing technologies. Um, now, the next thing I want to show you is the protocol stack. So the reason there is an internet protocol stack is because when the internet was being evolved, um, researchers realized that you can't just scale underlying technologies. So you had to essentially layer up. So the link layer is very analogous to the blockchain layer. And that's because um, the link layer is where the um, kind of packets are being sent out, but everybody could hear it, as I mentioned in the beginning, so you can't scale it. 
So the, um, you know, as the internet was being developed, uh, they introduced the um, TCP IP, which lives here. And this enables information to be routed across the network. And that's very analogous to the Lightning Network. Now, what's going to happen next with the blockchain stack? Well, right now we're essentially at a time where this stack is being created um, by many, many people around the world. So what goes in the box above? We're not sure yet. But what I can tell you is that um, this is a very exciting time to be around. Uh, we're essentially witnessing the creation of the blockchain stack um, as it's being evolved uh, today. The Internet Protocol stack took many years to develop, um, and I expect uh, something very similar to happen for the blockchain stack. So much of this is going to be developed over time, but the power is going to be huge. Um, just like how the Internet transformed how we send uh, information with one another, um, cryptocurrencies and blockchains and distributed ledgers are all going to change the way we transfer value with one another. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more.